Hello, it's the ghost. Welcome to A Stranger World Than Fiction, where we are taking a look at what's all going on out there. And this has to do with a strange bedside find, a seven foot tall praying mantis. Another strange experience by someone in our world. We're talking about the strange and unusual here on Stranger World. Take a listen to this account of the praying mantis. Let's see what they've got, and I'll give you my opinion after. This encounter was shared with UFO BC. Let's see what they had to say. This entry, this first entry on a praying mantis account, is on August 23rd, 2003. Hi, my name is Jim. I live in a small town on the outskirts of London. Here's an account that happened to me in April 2001. It's taken me this long to deal with it. I promise to you, everything that happened is true. I woke up at about 2.30 in the morning to find a tall praying mantis looking being and a cloaked being by the side of my bed. I thought to myself, what crazy dream is this? The cloaked being looked at me from beneath its hood, revealing its black skin which appeared leathery and reflecting light much like a beetle's skin. I shut my eyes, thinking, this must be a realistic dream. But when I reopened my eyes, the figures were, unfortunately, still there. The cloaked figure looked up to the tall praying mantis type as if it was confused as to what actions it should take next. The praying mantis turned its head towards the hooded one and made a series of high-pitched clicking sounds. I sensed this was the one in command. Possibly the other one was some kind of security guard. It's at this point I realized I'm definitely not dreaming. I can hear them. I couldn't move, but my brain went into a deep panic. Oh my God, what's going on? What are they? I don't want to look too closely at the mantis, so I just glanced at it. And I recall that it was tall, at least seven foot. It had to bend its neck because of the height of the ceiling. Its head was pointed with large eyes. Its forearms were extremely long and moved in a jerky fashion. The cloaked figure was closer, crouched by my bed, so I couldn't tell how tall it was, but I could clearly see that it was wearing some kind of overlapping rigid armor, including a metallic-looking breastplate that had a series of circles on it. Its head was dome-like, with emotionless facial features. Its eyes were large and surrounded again by detailed ridges. It acted in a way that reminded me of a robot or insect. I remember thinking to myself, nobody's going to believe this. A bloody giant-sized mantis and a medieval-style dressed alien. What the hell is this? Before this incident, although I hadn't seen one, I was familiar with the gray types, but I'd never heard of the praying mantis types. At this point, the mantis bent over its upper body, over my bed and directly above me. In its hand, it was holding a large metal object that looked like a needle. A green light shot directly from the needle and into my right eye. Maybe it's a laser, I'm not sure, but I do know it felt very painful. I could see all the veins from my eye, the same effect you get when an optician checks your eyes. I screamed, but no noise came out. Then I felt something stick to my skull. I'm not sure what, because by that time, I had my eyes closed. I pretended to sleep and went into a deep panic. My mind was racing at a million miles per hour. I heard a great whooshing sound, and when I next reopened my eyes, thankfully they had gone. I lay shaking and confused for what seemed like hours and just couldn't return back to sleep. At no time did I feel like they cared about my health or me. They seemed to have an insect cold type mentality. I really thought I was going to die. The next day, I spent the whole day in bed and felt as if I had been through a major operation. It's very painful to recall, and since this incident, I sometimes hear clicking sounds inside my head. I was in shock for a long while afterwards. I can say that this definitely happened. This definitely was real. I have no answers or conclusions, but I think it's important to get real life accounts out there. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Regards. Jim. UFO BC lets us, the reader, know that we sent Jim a response thanking him for sharing his account. 
A little while later, we received another email from him that included the two drawings above, a computer-generated graphic of the cloaked entity, as well as a very interesting sound file. But let me read the September 2nd, 2003 entry that was the follow-up to UFO BC. Jim says, I don't feel any pain at this moment, but I can tell when I've been taken because the next day I'm completely wasted, like I've been in a medical operation. I just cannot move or do anything much at all. Dealing with this and being self-employed, as you can imagine, is no fun at all. I can't remember anything else from the main encounter other than when I first woke up. They were doing something to my legs, and that there must have been a light source for me to see so much detail but from where it was emitting from, I can't say. Possibly the cloaked figure was holding a staff. I think he means that was holding a staff. I haven't noticed anyone else with similar encounters. To be honest, I still feel all this is too soon. Just writing about this is quite an effort. Although I do have some very good friends whom I've told, and they were initially skeptical, but now they do believe me, knowing me not to be a liar or a fantasist. I still feel very much alone and isolated. In my job, you have to be quite confident and outgoing. It's getting tougher and tougher hiding the trauma and maintaining a got-it-together appearance to the outside world. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Oh, by the way, I'm getting abducted by aliens that look like giant praying mantis. The day after the incident in 2001, I did do a word search on mantis-type aliens and got nothing. So at first, although I knew it did happen, I really just put it down to a very realistic dream and denied it to myself. Until six months ago, while surfing the net, I accidentally came across a drawing of a praying mantis alien holding a needle device. It was exactly what I had seen. I had a panic attack just looking at it. I just couldn't get it out of my head. The artist was Jay Westwood. It can be seen at alienalley.com. Also, on the same site, an artist by the name of Sylvia Rayner has drawn a picture of what the cloaked figure looked like. It's called Dark Entity. After a little research, I realized that these were well-defined aliens within ufology. If other people were seeing what I'd seen, then either it's a coincidence or it's really happening. You know, I've had nightmares before, but not in my own bedroom, and I've never felt any lasting trauma from a nightmare. I came across this website that made it easier to report your experiences. It even had a report form with a scroll bar to choose the different types of aliens, including the praying mantis type. So I finally decided to write what I had seen and send it around. Why do I think they chose me? I've had many of what a lot of people would describe as strange experiences while I was a kid, seeing UFOs, the walls talking to me every birthday. But I think a lot of kids have these things happen. I prefer to concentrate on the things that I can say really happened. I was 18 years old and in the summer of 92 and while working in London, I sneezed and a metal ball fell out of my left nostril. I told my friends, wow, London's so polluted. I must have breathed in some lead because a metal ball fell out of my nose. I now suspect it was possibly an implant. And in the summer of 96, it was a real hot night, so I thought I'd climb out of my bedroom window and onto the roof of my house. I got the strangest feeling of being watched. I looked into the star-filled night sky and had the crazy thought of trying to communicate with aliens telepathically. I know how that sounds crazy, but I'm sure a lot of people have tried it. It felt right somehow. I just sent out the feelings of love and that if anyone could just pick this up, I'd like to communicate. To my utter amazement, way up high, a ball of light appeared. I assumed it to be a satellite until it turned, dived, and hovered 200 feet above me. I could barely see it was a ball of light. It made no sound whatsoever. I stared in utter amazement. I felt calm and euphoric, completely at one with the world. The ball then just disappeared. I climbed back into my bedroom and fell into a deep sleep. Since then, I started to have 
really strange experiences. I'd wake up in the middle of the night floating above my bed, or worse, floating in between my bedroom wall. One time I even floated outside my house, and in the distance, I could see the ball of light. I was getting pulled towards it. I imagined myself surrounded by white light, and I flew back to my bed with a thud. I don't think I was astral projecting. This felt real. Then these experiences completely stopped. And I mean, so much so that all of this started to become a distant memory. I started to get on with my life. And then the praying mantis encounter happened. So I'm really not sure why they chose me. Maybe they sensed a spiritual awaken within me, or more likely it was just a mere opportunity. They just spotted some young fool on a roof of a house and thought, he'll do easy pickings. One thing's for sure, I really felt no spiritual vibes or energy, if you like, from these beings at all. I just felt like a lab rat. Sincerely, Jim G. And that is what Jim says. Now, what do I think about all of this? Let's talk. Not only is this an alien abduction account, the aliens are taking on the form of an insect we know here on Earth, the praying mantis. Although this guy does convey a sense of fear, he's also backing up his reliability by letting us know what his friends and co-workers think of him, which would be honest. Even with all of that, I'm giving this account a thumbs down. For me, this share by Jim G doesn't sit right with me, and I'm going to be pretty short and sweet about it. I think this person who, as we've learned by now, things on the internet, we don't know what it is. This could be a man, a woman, or even a child. But this person should, in my opinion, maybe look into a career of fictional stories and creative writing. There is nothing here that makes me think this person is credible or a reliable source for real and true information. The way it's written, the spelling errors, and just the randomness and how Jim throws in other accounts throughout as he sees fit reiterates why I'm giving this a thumbs down. I do not believe this story to be true and I wish this guy all the best in continuing on with his creativity. So that's my take on this story that's very out there of Jim getting abducted by a giant praying mantis. My mind is always open. I believe in a lot of things that many find just too outrageous to even consider. But this one, I don't believe it to be true. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's possible? Let us know. And thank you for listening today. Just another crazy topic in our crazy world. Share what you think of this abduction by a giant insect. And until next time, and I will talk to you all soon.